Hey guys, welcome back to LRC. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your D42 into a drift machine without changing electronics. You can use the same electronics that comes with it. To do this, you only need a C34 wheels and this is painted to silver and a 3D printed drift tires. You can download this file from our official store or the link in the description. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can check out the link in the description for a good and cheap 3D printer that I'm using myself. And the third item will be a gyro for RC drift. You can get a cheap one or an expensive one, but an expensive one like this does make a significant difference you can check this out in the link in the description we have also did a comparison video of an expensive gyro versus a cheap gyro on our previous video you can check out the link on the top right so let's start by removing the body shell off the chassis first there are six screws down there that you have to remove which is these two these two and these two press the tab here then remove the ID we're gonna do the easy part first which is changing the wheels and the tires Alright, so I believe the chassis is sitting lower as well because of the smaller diameter tires. Need to lower it further to look better. There isn't enough space to mount a gyro within this cavity. Most likely we're gonna install this gyro on body down here or inside. So what I'm gonna do is adjust the suspension geometry first, like lowering the front and also adjusting the camber before we proceed to install this gyro. To lower the front right height, I'm gonna drive this M3 screw into the hole of either hole of this uh, upper arm. So as you drive the screw down, you push the upper arm to tilt up, that lowers down the right height. If you look at here, the left side is lower than the right side. I'm gonna just eyeball first, looking at the angle of the arm and also the length of the screw. I've dropped too much and there isn't much travel left, so I'm gonna lift it back up again. So the front is already slightly lower than the rear, so that's sufficient. And then we're going to adjust the camber. The link rod here has already been turned to the maximum, as we can't see any thread over here. And we need some negative camber, which is uh, the top of the tire tilting towards the inside. With no thread here, we are unable to turn this rod end towards in to pull the top of the wheel towards the inside. So we're going to cut a little bit of plastic from here so that we can reduce the length of the upper link. Much easier using cutter. Cut it nicer. Careful with the knife you're holding. So try this at your own risk. So left about two mm material over there. I'm gonna secure your turnbuckle back in. You should be able to turn this in with your bare hand for the first few rounds. Okay, now install your rod hand back in. Install your knuckle. As you can see now, my upper link rod is much shorter and starting to see camber on view on the left already. So we're going to repeat the other side. Okay, now come to the part about adjusting the camber or negative camber. Uh, turn on your car and then switch your remote to the maximum uh, steering view rate. Alright, I've adjusted both sides and it looks like it doesn't need a lot of negative camber. And then as you can see on the outer side of the tyre, there's a gap which is normal. And over that side as well, there's uh, a bit of gap in between the floor. So if I go full steering, it's parallel to the ground. I mean for the inner tire. Let's focus on this one. So when it's on full steering, it's parallel to the ground. So that's the right setting, at least that's from my experience. Now we're going to work on mounting the gyro to this, which is a bit fiddly because of the Space available. So remove the screw. We'll make sure your battery connector is really off from the battery. So no shorting. So this is a new board. This is not the same as the D12. The chipset is different. Just in case before you start doing anything, unplugging anything, take a photo of your board first to clearly show where which one connect to where. But in this case, we are gonna unplug the servo wire only. Signal is on the inside. Remember. Uh, ground is on the outer side. So you unplug that, plug this to the female connector. So this is signal, so white color way is signal. The other side, plug it to male connector. 
receiver board the white color wire here should be the signal wire and black is to the ground and this is the gain adjuster in this case we don't need yet because there's no extra channel on this unless you have a aftermarket receiver then you can connect this to your let's say channel 3 or channel 6 that has a tuning knob to adjust the gain so now we gotta power it up to uh, test it first and make sure there's nothing touching the metal part of the, the chassis Okay, turn it on and wait for the gyro to initialize first, then you start binding. Direction is correct, the gyro is working, so as if the chassis is, is moving, so the steering is moving as well. So I install everything back, so I tuck all the wires in there, then I remove a bit of material over here so that the gyro wires can go through. Some good foam tape mounted here. Okay, now we can test it. Now the direction is uh, incorrect because we have uh, tilted the gyro to another way. So we're going to reverse the gyro. Alright, I have reversed the gyro and then if you see I have nose to the right, this will st steer to the left. Okay, that's the correct way. And it seems like the gyro is very sensitive now. Yes, we have done making this a drift machine using the stock electronic.